Cretan Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. And Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie. City can be not a dream, but a nightmare. Train. Betty Anderson now approaches her private moment of truth and crisis, a moment which may be her personal point of no return. I'm sorry, I can't hear you very well. Sharon. Sharon, baby, I've been calling you all evening. This isn't Sharon. Well, then who am I talking to? Who is this? Where is Sharon? Oh, I just knew something had happened. Nothing's happened to Sharon. She went to a party. Oh. Oh, I see. This is Sharon's mother. Oh, well... I, I'm a new roommate, Betty Anderson. I'll, I'll have her call you as soon as she gets in. Does she know where to reach you? Oh, yes, she knows. I just got lonesome. I wanted to hear her voice. Be sure she was all right. Oh, she is all right, Mrs. Purcell. I'll have her call you. No, she mustn't call tonight. It, it would wake her father and he'd get mad. Uh, it, it was sweet talking to you, Miss Anderson. Mrs. Purcell? Uh, hello? Hello? Mother? This is Betty. Betty. Betty, I thought I'd never hear from you. Are you all right? It must be very late. I know. I... I just wanted to talk to you. I was worried about you. Are you sure there's nothing wrong? Your voice sounds funny. Where are you, Betty? Please tell me. I'm in a girl's apartment. She, she let me stay here while I look for a job. She's been very nice to me. Is Daddy there? No. Oh, well, are you back together? No, Betty. He... Your father hasn't been well, Betty. He's, uh... He's in Greenvale. Greenvale? He had a nervous breakdown, Betty. Too many things happened all at once, and he... He just couldn't stand the strain. Oh, so many things. I, I left without even seeing him. Mother, how is he? Well, he's in a very depressed state. Oh, Betty, I went out to see him the other day and he didn't even know me. It's like talking to a stranger. Oh, Mother, how terrible for you. I, I, um, I didn't want to come home, but if, if you think it'll help, I'll... Yes, it might. The doctors think so, at least. But, Betty... I'll come home, Mother. Goodbye.
I'm sorry about what happened. That idiot Roy came back to the hotel. He's not a very good loser. Don't do it, Betty. Don't go home. I have to. No, you don't. Listen, I know how you feel about tonight, but... Believe me, going home is not going to work for you any more than it worked for me. It just seems the easiest thing to do. It isn't. I should have warned you about Roy. He's filled without the smooth approach. I'm not leaving because of what happened with Roy. And he didn't need to warn me. You've never lied to me. I knew all about you and Phil. And I really didn't have any illusions about Roy. I guess he had every right to feel cheated. I was a cheat in a sense. I began to want the things a girl can have in this town, but I couldn't want them enough. Well, that pipe dream's over. If you're going to join the ranks of the honest working girl, why are you packing? I called home. My father's sick. I think he needs me. They always needed me, they said. Every vow was because of me. Oh, um, I, I forgot to tell you. Your mother called. She sounded very upset. She always sounds upset. I promised her you'd call. Uh, she said not to call tonight. Your father was asleep. We'll get her tomorrow. You promise me? Sure, I promise. I send the money, you know. But don't ask me to live with him. It just won't work. It won't work, Betty. None of it. There's a late train for Boston tonight. I can get into town by tomorrow night. I'll miss you. I never really liked Libby. She... She cared a lot about things, but people never bothered her. She would have known how to handle Roy. She would have known how to handle Phil. Did something happen between you and Phil tonight? Well, you see this little bonus? It turned out to be a farewell present. Old Barnes is retiring, and they're sending Phil to Europe to replace him. I'm sorry. It was too good to last. What will you do now? Go job hunting on Monday. Who knows, maybe something will turn up. I'll miss you, Sharon. She won't come back, will you? I, uh, I don't know. You won't come back here. If I do, I'll, I won't be running away, Sharon. I've never been worried about running away. I've always been afraid of what I'm running to. see me? Why, Lucy, I almost applauded out loud during your solo. You did? Yes, yes. I was just saying to Dr. Rossi, when Lucy Frisbee sings, Come, Let Us Gather by the River, I'm so overcome that I could almost jump in. Oh, just for that, Mac, you can come home with me for a nice chicken dinner. Well, let me take a rain check. Connie McKenzie's expecting me. Well, anytime, Mac. And uh, after dinner, we'll get out the road heaver and sing. Like birds, Lucy. Like birds. <laughs> Bye, Mac. Talk to you. I'm in a hurry, Father. Come in. I, uh, I've been taking inventory. On the Sabbath? Come in, Paul. You never come in. Why should I? Nothing ever changes in here. Well, I'm here. Well, you don't change either, Father. You're immutable. You know what that means, immutable? Still have a way with words, don't you, Paul? Yeah, some of the words don't change, like father. Why should that change? The other boys used to call their fathers dad. I never prevented you from calling me that. Well, perhaps I really didn't want to. I remember how I used to like coming in here. There was a magic in those apothecary jars. You were a sorcerer to me then. My great ambition was to become a sorcerer's apprentice. These old tables, they were... They were marble tables to me once. They still are marble. Well, they were. Now they're cheap, stained, dirty. Oh, I forgot, you never leave anything dirty. You are, as they say, compulsive about that. 
You always were quite a talker. Articulate is a fashionable word, Father. Of course, I began articulating early, facing a jury. You said what you had to say. To choose, not to choose, is choice. One of the foundation stones of existentialist philosophy. It's quite different from our traditional patent place Puritan beliefs. Nothing wrong with our traditional beliefs. If you'd followed them. Followed them? Never had a chance to follow them. They were forced on me. I must tell you I've gagged on them. I saw him the other night. Did you speak to him? He spoke to me first. Paul. Paul Hanley? Yes, it's Elliot Carson, isn't it? Back from jail. What did he say? He said many things. I was testing him, trying to find out how he felt about me. Of course, I reminded him that I was a boy then. Only a boy. This was my, uh, my champagne. I knew you'd do that. What did he say? He did say he knew I was lying. You did the right thing. The only thing. Which comes first? A philosophical question now. Bear with me. Which comes first? The only thing or the right thing? What's your order of necessity? Paul. Yes, Father? Think of what would have happened. Just think of it. Think of it? I don't have to think of it. It thinks for itself inside me. You understand that? I'll let you get back to your inventory. Come to the house. Why? For dinner. Sunday dinner? You and I alone, staring at each other like two grim figures out of Eugene O'Neill play. No. Well, you have the wrong century. Goodbye. Paul. Oh.